Some of these conspiracies are wild, unsettling, and highly speculative. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer discretion is advised. The 2020 monoliths refer to a series of mysterious metal structures that appeared and disappeared in various locations around the world in late 2020. The first monolith was discovered in the Utah desert on November 18, 2020, sparking widespread media attention and public fascination. These structures were typically described as tall, metallic, and triangular in cross-section, bearing a striking resemblance to the monolith from the film 2001, A Space Odyssey. After the Utah discovery, similar monoliths were reported in Romania, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, and other countries, often in remote or unexpected locations. Some observers noted that the appearances coincided with a period of global uncertainty, leading to speculation about their potential significance or message. Analysis of the Utah monolith revealed it was made of metal sheets riveted together, suggesting human construction rather than extraterrestrial origin. The sudden appearances and disappearances of these structures led some to theorize about a coordinated art project or viral marketing campaign. Certain individuals claimed to have witnessed unusual lights or unexplained phenomena near the monolith sites, fueling speculation about paranormal involvement. The timing and global nature of the monolith appearances led some to interpret them as symbolic markers of a shift in human consciousness or the dawn of a new era. While most monoliths were eventually revealed to be human-made installations, the phenomenon sparked discussions about collective psychology and the power of mystery in the digital age. The left-hand path refers to a set of spiritual or magical practices that emphasize personal power, individualism, and self-deification. This approach contrasts with the right-hand path, which typically focuses on union with the divine through self-sacrifice and adherence to established moral codes. Practitioners of the left-hand path often view conventional morality as a constraint on personal growth and seek to transcend societal norms. Some left-hand path traditions incorporate elements of tantric philosophy, using controlled transgression of taboos as a means of spiritual transformation. Historical figures associated with the left-hand path include Aleister Crowley, Anton LaVey, and certain Gnostic sects. Adherents argue that embracing one's inner darkness and confronting personal fears leads to greater self-awareness and spiritual evolution. Left-hand path practices may involve rituals designed to awaken dormant psychic abilities or harness occult forces for personal empowerment. Critics of the left-hand path often misinterpret its principles as promoting evil or selfishness, while practitioners view it as a path to ultimate self-realization. Some researchers suggest that left-hand path philosophies align with recent findings in psychology about the importance of shadow work and integrating all aspects of the psyche. The concept of the left-hand path has influenced various subcultures, including certain forms of metal music and avant-garde art movements. Ritual purification refers to the practice of cleansing oneself spiritually or physically as part of religious or cultural traditions. These rituals are found in various forms across many religions, including Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Judaism. The concept is based on the belief that certain actions, substances, or states of being can make a person spiritually or ritually impure. Common methods of ritual purification include washing with water, fasting, abstinence from certain foods or activities, and the use of specific prayers or incantations. Some cultures believe that ritual impurity can be contagious, requiring purification not only of individuals but also of objects and spaces. Certain purification rituals involve the use of natural elements such as fire, earth, or smoke, which are believed to have cleansing properties. Archaeological evidence suggests that ritual purification practices have existed for thousands of years, with ancient civilizations constructing specialized baths and temple complexes for this purpose. Some researchers argue that ritual purification serves important psychological functions, helping individuals transition between different mental states or social roles. Modern scientific studies have explored potential health benefits of certain purification practices, such as the antimicrobial properties of some traditional cleansing agents. 
In some traditions, ritual purification is seen as a necessary step before engaging in spiritual activities or entering sacred spaces believed to enhance one's connection with the divine. Satyrs are mythical creatures from ancient Greek folklore, typically depicted as half-human and half-goat beings. These beings were often associated with nature, fertility, and wild behavior, particularly in connection with the god Dionysus. Some scholars argue that satyrs may have been inspired by real encounters with unknown primate species in ancient times. Historical accounts describe satyrs as inhabiting remote forests and mountains, aligning with reports of undiscovered hominids in similar environments. Certain cryptozoologists suggest that legends of satyrs could be linked to surviving populations of Neanderthals or other archaic human species. Ancient Greek art and literature provide detailed descriptions of satyr's appearance and behavior, which some interpret as evidence of their potential existence. Some researchers point to the consistency of satyr descriptions across different cultures and time periods as indicative of a common real-world source. The goat-like features of satyrs have led some to speculate about the possibility of human-animal hybrids created through ancient genetic manipulation. Certain New Age beliefs incorporate the idea of satyrs as nature spirits or elemental beings that can be contacted through meditation or ritual practices. Some folklore enthusiasts argue that modern reports of encounters with mysterious hairy humanoids in forests could be connected to the satyr myth. Clown sightings refer to a phenomenon where people report encounters with individuals dressed as clowns in unexpected public locations. These incidents gained widespread attention in 2016, with numerous reports across North America, Europe, and Australia. Witnesses described seeing clowns lurking in wooded areas, near schools, or wandering through neighborhoods, often at night. Some sightings involved clowns attempting to lure children or displaying threatening behavior towards adults. Law enforcement agencies in various countries received hundreds of reports, leading to investigations and public warnings. Several theories emerged to explain the phenomenon, including viral marketing campaigns, mass hysteria, or copycat behavior inspired by media coverage. Some researchers drew parallels between clown sightings and historical cases of mass panic, such as the phantom clown incidents of the 1980s. Certain cryptozoology enthusiasts speculated about a connection between clown sightings and reports of other mysterious entities like Bigfoot or aliens. The phenomenon led to increased interest in the psychological concept of coulrophobia, or fear of clowns, and its potential societal impacts. Some sociologists argue that clown sightings reflect deeper societal anxieties and serve as a form of modern folklore or urban legend. Iram of the Pillars refers to a legendary lost city mentioned in the Quran and ancient Arabian lore. Archaeological evidence suggests it may have been a real place, possibly located in the southern Arabian Peninsula. The city was said to be adorned with towering pillars and opulent architecture, surpassing any other city of its time. Some researchers believe Iram may have been destroyed by a natural disaster, such as a massive sandstorm or earthquake. Satellite imagery and ground-penetrating radar have revealed the presence of ancient trade routes and potential buried structures in the region where Iram is thought to have existed. The discovery of frankincense trees in the area aligns with historical accounts of Iram's involvement in the lucrative incense trade. Bedouin oral traditions describe Iram as a place of great wealth and advanced technology, suggesting it may have been an important center of knowledge and commerce. The story of Iram's destruction is sometimes interpreted as a cautionary tale about the dangers of hubris and excess in ancient societies. Fossils are fake refers to the belief that paleontological findings are fabricated or misinterpreted. Some adherents argue that the complex, detailed nature of fossils is too perfect to have occurred naturally over millions of years. They point to instances where fossil forgeries have been discovered, suggesting that this practice may be more widespread than commonly acknowledged. The theory posits that fossil creation could be a tool for supporting evolutionary theories and maintaining scientific funding. Supporters often cite the lack of transitional fossils in the record as evidence that the entire fossil narrative is constructed. 
Some claim that techniques used to date fossils, such as radiometric dating, are fundamentally flawed or manipulated to fit predetermined timelines. The idea draws parallels with other conspiracy theories about scientific institutions manipulating data to maintain control over public knowledge. Believers sometimes argue that dinosaur bones are actually the remains of medieval dragons or other mythical creatures reinterpreted to fit modern scientific paradigms. The theory also suggests that some fossils might be the result of advanced ancient civilizations creating art or technology that was later misidentified. Shakespeare wrote more refers to the theory that William Shakespeare authored additional works beyond his known canon of plays and sonnets. Some scholars argue that certain anonymous or contested plays from the Elizabethan era bear striking similarities to Shakespeare's writing style and themes. Textual analysis has revealed patterns in vocabulary and sentence structure in some unattributed works that closely match Shakespeare's verified writings. Historical records indicate gaps in Shakespeare's known productivity, suggesting he may have been working on undocumented projects during these periods. Cryptographic studies of certain texts have led some researchers to believe that Shakespeare embedded his name or initials as a signature in works not officially attributed to him. The theory posits that political or social pressures may have compelled Shakespeare to publish some works anonymously or under different names. Collaborative practices common in Elizabethan theater could explain why some of Shakespeare's additional works were not solely credited to him. Supporters of this idea point to the vast knowledge displayed in Shakespeare's known works, suggesting he likely produced more content drawing from his extensive expertise. Some researchers believe that lost manuscripts or previously unknown collaborations may still be discovered, potentially expanding Shakespeare's recognized body of work. This entry refers to the theory that psychedelic substances can effectively treat various physical and mental health conditions. Research has shown promising results in using psilocybin, the active compound in magic mushrooms, to alleviate symptoms of depression and anxiety in cancer patients. LSD has been studied for its potential to reduce cluster headaches and migraines, with some users reporting long-lasting relief after controlled dosing. Ayahuasca, a traditional Amazonian brew, has demonstrated effectiveness in treating addiction and post-traumatic stress disorder in clinical trials. MDMA-assisted psychotherapy has shown significant success in treating PTSD, leading to its designation as a breakthrough therapy by the FDA. Ibogaine, derived from the iboga plant, has been explored as a potential treatment for opioid addiction, with some studies indicating it can reduce withdrawal symptoms and cravings. Ketamine, originally used as an anesthetic, has gained attention for its rapid antidepressant effects, particularly in treatment-resistant cases. Microdosing, the practice of taking sub-perceptual doses of psychedelics, has been reported to enhance creativity, focus, and overall well-being. Some researchers believe that the ability of hallucinogens to promote neuroplasticity may underlie their therapeutic potential across a range of conditions. The theory suggests that these substances can facilitate profound psychological insights and emotional breakthroughs, leading to long-term improvements in mental health. The Black Hope Curse refers to a series of tragic events and supernatural occurrences allegedly linked to a housing development built on top of an old African-American cemetery in Crosby, Texas. In the 1980s, residents of the Newport subdivision began experiencing unexplained phenomena, including mysterious illnesses, financial troubles, and untimely deaths. The problems reportedly started when homeowners Sam and Judith Haney discovered human remains while digging in their backyard to install a swimming pool. Further investigation revealed that the subdivision had been constructed over the Black Hope Cemetery, a 19th century burial ground for freed slaves and their descendants. Residents reported seeing apparitions, hearing disembodied voices, and witnessing objects moving on their own within their homes. Some families experienced a string of misfortunes, including sudden job losses, severe health issues, and even the deaths of multiple family members in quick succession. Paranormal investigators who visited the site claimed to have recorded EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, and captured unexplained images on film. The curse is believed by some to be the result of disturbing the final resting place of the cemetery's original occupants, whose graves were allegedly desecrated during construction. 
Legal battles ensued as homeowners sought compensation for the undisclosed cemetery beneath their properties, with some cases reaching the Texas Supreme Court. Despite efforts to relocate some of the discovered remains, many believe the curse continues to affect the area, with reports of unusual events persisting to this day. This gruesome theory suggests that a group of serial killers is responsible for the deaths of hundreds of young men across the United States. These deaths, often ruled as accidental drownings, share a common pattern of occurring near bodies of water after the victims had been out drinking. Retired New York City detectives Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte first proposed this theory after noticing similarities in numerous cases spanning multiple states. The name Smiley Face Killer comes from graffiti of smiley faces found near some of the locations where victims' bodies were recovered. Advocates of the theory point to the victims' similar profiles, mostly college-aged white males who were athletic and academically successful. Some cases involve victims being found in locations that seem implausible for accidental drowning, such as areas of shallow water or locations far from where they were last seen. Chemical analysis of some victims' bodies has revealed the presence of drugs not typically associated with recreational use, suggesting potential foul play. Supporters argue that the geographical spread of cases and the apparent coordination required indicate a network of killers rather than a lone individual. Critics of the theory contend that the deaths are more likely the result of accidental drownings, often exacerbated by alcohol consumption. Despite skepticism from many law enforcement agencies, some families of victims continue to push for further investigation into the smiley face killer theory. The 2006 O'Hare Airport sighting refers to a UFO incident reported by multiple witnesses at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport on November 7, 2006. Numerous airport employees, including pilots, air traffic controllers, and ground crew, observed a metallic, disc-shaped object hovering over gate C-17. Hey, Dave, it's Tower. Hey, did you see a flying disc out by C-17? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. 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 Yeah, that's Hey, you guys been celebrating the holidays or anything or what? You having a Christmas party today? I have not seen anything, so And if I did, I wouldn't admit to it. No, I have not seen any flying disc at gate C-7. Unless you got a new aircraft you're uh, bringing out today that we don't know about. No, I have not seen anything, so... The object was described as being dark gray in color, approximately 6 to 24 feet in diameter, and perfectly round with a smooth surface. Witnesses reported that the UFO remained stationary for several minutes before suddenly ascending at an incredible speed, leaving a clear, circular hole in the cloud layer above. The event occurred during daylight hours, around 4.30 p.m. local time, and lasted for approximately five minutes. Despite multiple credible witnesses, the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, initially denied any unusual activity and attributed the sightings to a weather phenomenon. After pressure from employees and the media, the FAA conducted an internal review but maintained that no radar data corroborated the sightings. Some witnesses claimed that they were told not to discuss the incident, leading to speculation about a potential cover-up. The sighting gained significant media attention and was featured in various documentaries and television shows about UFO phenomena. The credibility of the witnesses, including trained aviation professionals, and the consistency of their accounts lend weight to the validity of the sighting. The incident remains one of the most well-documented UFO sightings at a major airport. The New Delhi Monkey Man refers to a mysterious creature that allegedly terrorized residents of the Indian capital in 2001. Eyewitness accounts described a hairy, ape-like figure standing about four feet tall with glowing red eyes and sharp claws. The creature was said to possess extraordinary agility, able to leap from building to building and evade capture with ease. Reports of attacks by the Monkey Man led to widespread panic, with some victims claiming scratches and bites from the encounters. Local authorities received over 100 calls and complaints related to the creature within a few days, prompting police investigations and increased patrols. Some witnesses reported that the being wore a metal helmet and had features resembling both a monkey and a human, leading to speculation about its true nature. 
The incidents sparked theories ranging from mass hysteria to an escaped experiment, or even a manifestation of a Hindu deity. Cryptozoologists have drawn parallels between the New Delhi Monkey Man and other legendary creatures like the Chupacabra or Spring-Heeled Jack. The panic surrounding the Monkey Man led to several injuries and at least one death as people fled in fear, jumping from buildings or running into traffic. Despite extensive searches and a reward offered for its capture, no concrete evidence of the Monkey Man's existence was ever found. The Amber Room refers to a lavishly decorated chamber that was once housed in the Catherine Palace near St. Petersburg, Russia, before its mysterious disappearance during World War II. Constructed in the 18th century, the room was adorned with panels of amber backed with gold leaf, creating a stunning display of wealth and craftsmanship. The room was originally installed in the Berlin City Palace, but was later gifted to Tsar Peter the Great of Russia in 1716 as a symbol of Prussian-Russian friendship. In 1941, Nazi German forces dismantled and transported the Amber Room to Königsberg Castle in East Prussia, where it was last seen before vanishing without a trace. Numerous theories about the room's fate have emerged, including claims that it was destroyed in Allied bombing raids, hidden in abandoned mines, or secretly transported to South America. Some researchers believe that the room may have been smuggled out of Königsberg by submarine, potentially ending up in a private collection. Reports of amber fragments washing up on Baltic beaches have fueled speculation that the room may be hidden underwater or in coastal caves. Several expeditions and searches have been conducted over the years, including the use of ground-penetrating radar and historical document analysis, but no conclusive evidence has been found. The Russian government commissioned a replica of the Amber Room in the 1970s, which took over 20 years to complete and now stands in the Catherine Palace. The enduring mystery of the Amber Room has led to its status as one of the most valuable lost treasures in history, with an estimated worth of over $500 million. Clark Ashton Smith was an American writer and artist who made significant contributions to weird fiction, fantasy, and horror literature in the early 20th century. He was part of the Lovecraft Circle, a group of writers who corresponded with H.P. Lovecraft and shared similar cosmic horror themes in their work. Smith's writing is characterized by its ornate, poetic style and vivid imagery, often set in imaginary worlds like Zothique, Hyperborea, and Averroine. Despite his prolific output and critical acclaim, Smith's work was largely overlooked during his lifetime, leading some to believe he was deliberately marginalized by the publishing industry. His stories frequently blend elements of science fiction, fantasy, and horror, creating unique and atmospheric tales that defy easy categorization. Smith was also an accomplished sculptor and painter, creating surreal and fantastical artworks that complemented his literary creations. Some readers believe that Smith's writings contain hidden occult knowledge or references to real mystical practices, fueling speculation about his involvement in esoteric circles. His use of invented languages and mythologies in his stories has led some to draw parallels with J.R.R. Tolkien's world-building techniques. Smith's work has experienced a resurgence of interest in recent decades, with some scholars arguing that he was ahead of his time in terms of literary experimentation and genre blending. Star rubies are rare gemstones that display a distinct star-like pattern when viewed under proper lighting conditions, a phenomenon known as asterism. These gems are believed by some to possess powerful metaphysical properties, including the ability to enhance psychic abilities and protect against negative energies. Ancient texts from various cultures mention star rubies as talismans of great power, often associated with royalty and divine protection. Some practitioners of crystal healing claim that star rubies can stimulate the root chakra, promoting grounding and stability in one's life. The unique star pattern in these gems is caused by the presence of rutile needles within the crystal structure, which reflect light in a specific way. Certain individuals report experiencing vivid dreams or enhanced intuition when keeping star rubies near their bedside or wearing them as jewelry. In some esoteric traditions, star rubies are thought to amplify the wearer's natural leadership abilities and charisma. The rarity of high-quality star rubies has led to their association with exclusivity and hidden knowledge in some mystical circles. 
Some believers in the power of gemstones suggest that star rubies can help align the physical and spiritual bodies, promoting overall well-being. The largest known star ruby, the Neelanjali ruby, weighs 1,370 carats and is said to possess an extraordinarily clear and vibrant star pattern. Globsters are large, unidentified organic masses that occasionally wash up on beaches around the world, often sparking speculation about unknown marine creatures. These mysterious blobs typically consist of decomposing tissue, fat, and connective fibers, sometimes weighing several tons and measuring up to 40 feet in length. The term globster was coined by Ivan T. Sanderson in 1962 to describe these enigmatic carcasses that defy immediate classification. Some of the most famous globster incidents include the St. Augustine Monster of 1896 and the Tasmanian Globster of 1960, which garnered significant media attention. While many globsters are eventually identified as decomposed whales or basking sharks, some remain unclassified, fueling theories about undiscovered marine life. The unusual appearance of globsters, often lacking recognizable features like heads or limbs, contributes to their mystique and the difficulty in identifying them. Some cryptozoologists argue that globsters could be evidence of surviving prehistoric marine reptiles or unknown species of giant octopuses. The decomposition process of marine animals can create unusual textures and structures, leading to misidentification and speculation about their origin. Analysis of globster tissue samples has sometimes revealed surprising results, such as the presence of collagen characteristic of certain whale species. Internet cults refer to online communities that exhibit cult-like behaviors, often centered around charismatic leaders or ideologies spread through digital platforms. These groups can form around various topics, including conspiracy theories, alternative lifestyles, or fringe political beliefs. The anonymity and global reach of the internet allow these cults to recruit members from diverse backgrounds and geographical locations. Some internet cults use sophisticated algorithms and targeted content to create echo chambers, reinforcing beliefs and isolating members from opposing viewpoints. Psychological manipulation techniques, such as love bombing and gaslighting, are often employed in digital spaces to maintain control over cult members. Certain online communities have been known to encourage extreme behaviors, including self-harm or violent acts, in the name of their shared beliefs. The rapid spread of information online can lead to the quick formation and evolution of cult-like groups, sometimes resulting in real-world consequences. Some researchers argue that the addictive nature of social media platforms makes users more susceptible to cult-like influence and indoctrination. Internet cults have been linked to various incidents, including mass suicide, terrorist activities, and large-scale financial fraud schemes. The decentralized nature of many internet cults makes them difficult to monitor or regulate, posing challenges for law enforcement and mental health professionals. Some former members of internet cults report experiencing similar psychological effects to those who have left traditional cults, including PTSD and difficulty reintegrating into society. The Owlman is a cryptid reportedly sighted in Cornwall, England, particularly around the village of Monon Smith. First reported in 1976, the creature is described as a large, owl-like humanoid standing between 5 and 7 feet tall, with glowing red eyes and pointed ears. Witnesses claim the Owlman has a wide, curved beak, and is covered in grey or silver feathers, with some accounts mentioning clawed feet. The initial sightings were made by two young girls who claimed to have seen the creature hovering near the tower of St. Monin and St. Stephen's Church. Subsequent reports have described the Owlman as having a screeching cry and the ability to fly or glide silently. Some researchers draw parallels between the Owlman and other cryptids like Mothman, suggesting a possible connection to supernatural or interdimensional phenomena. Local folklore associates the Owlman with ancient Cornish legends of guardian spirits or otherworldly beings tied to sacred sites. Skeptics argue that the sightings could be misidentifications of large owls native to the area, such as the European Eagle Owl. The timing of the initial Almond reports coincided with increased UFO activity in the region, leading some to speculate about a potential extraterrestrial connection. 
The Wolpertinger refers to a mythical creature from Bavarian folklore, described as a hybrid animal with the body of a rabbit, antlers of a deer, wings of a pheasant, and fangs of a wolf. Sightings of Wolpertingers have been reported in the forested regions of Bavaria, particularly during twilight hours when visibility is limited. Taxidermy specimens of Wolpertingers can be found in some Bavarian museums and hunting lodges, lending an air of authenticity to the creature's existence. Some cryptozoologists argue that the Wolpertinger could be a yet undiscovered species, pointing to the recent discoveries of other hybrid animals in nature as evidence for its potential reality. Local hunters claim to have encountered Wolpertingers during their expeditions, describing the creature's elusive nature and quick movements through the underbrush. The Wolpertinger's purported ability to fly short distances and blend into its surroundings has been cited as reasons for its successful evasion of scientific documentation. 